Hey guys, Moidog here, and today we finally got some brand new content coming to Squad in the game's newest update, V2.11. Although there are a host of bug fixes and quality of life updates, as well as some really nice changes to the FOB exclusion radius that was updated a couple months ago, this patch marks the first real content drop for nearly six months. So many of y'all who might have taken a break from Squad in that time should be happy to finally experience something different with the latest map, Anvil. We'll be going over the entire patch notes here in a sec, but I do want to remind everyone that I stream a lot of squad over at twitch.tv slash moidog. I squad lead, run vehicles, and play practically every kit in the game, and by the time this video is out, I'll be live checking out all the new stuff live on stream, so I hope to see you there. Anvil is the newest map to squad, and although we got a little taste of it with the squad SDK update last week, yesterday marked the first time we could actually get our hands on the map since it was play tested as part of the Aussie mod over a year ago. Unfortunately, we still aren't getting a new faction just yet, but I will say that Anvil looks incredible and is quite possibly the best optimized new map we've had in recent memory. Hopping in game, I experienced a full server and had firefights on both the higher plateaus as well as down in the valley, and it did didn't really feel like there were any major frame drops at all. It's also a map that has some incredible sight lines, and you should notice that there is not much fog at all, meaning that the use of tow fobs, overwatching the valley, or vehicles parked up on the other side of the map are going to be incredibly deadly and will need to be taken care of. It's been a long time coming, and I know I've said this about a lot of maps, but I seriously think this is going to be a fan favorite. The map is a unique mix of Korra and Kohat gameplay. Teams will have to manage on-point objective defenses, as well as zonal fire-based support on the higher ground, and vehicles can either be incredibly powerful or simply ticket pinatas if not played correctly. If you still don't believe me, this is one of the few maps where I genuinely enjoyed playing Advanced and Secure, and I absolutely hate that game mode. On release, Anvil has eight layers. AS V1, V2, Invasion V1 and V2, RAS V1 and V2, Skirmish V1, and Territory Control V1. The big standout ones for me are AS V1, which I think is a pretty good all-around layer, Invasion V2, which is a night layer that puts insurgents on the attack while Russia defends, RAS V2, a huge nine flag layer with a helicopter and a tank, and Territory Control, which should make for some really interesting gameplay in the valley and on the plateaus. Overall, I think this is a fantastic addition to the game, and although we all could have done with it a little bit earlier, I've got to give it to the devs. They did a great job with optimization, and it plays really well. My only recommendation right now would be for ASV1, because we need to really increase the opening of the blue 4 entrance at the northwest side of the map. As you can see here, there's only really one way out, and we all got jammed up trying to leave the base, which made the initial push delayed even more. The US has nearly twice the distance to travel travel on our first cap, which means that even without traffic jams, Russia will almost always be the first one to start capping all of the objectives and ultimately get to the middle cap, Lavender, first. Apart from that, I really like what I've seen, and I can't wait to play more. In addition to the map, we also have some new gameplay changes as well, in the form of adjustable FOB exclusion radii. If you weren't aware, in June, the devs implemented a 400 meter FOB exclusion radius, meaning that FOB radios had to be 400 meters from each other in order to help combat the FOB spam around objectives that we currently see. Although this works for a lot of the larger maps, smaller maps like Sumari or Logar Valley were left with the ability for teams to only really place one or two relevant FOBs in the middle of the map. In 2.11, the FOB exclusion radius has been reduced back down to 300 meters on all skirmish layers, as well as Korra, Fools Road, Kokan, Logar, and Sumari layers. In case you did want to double check what the radius is on the map you're currently playing, there is also a brand new map layer info tab on the command map, showing specific map layer info including the exclusion and construction radius. And although this is not a new map, we now have our first official seeding layer in the game, Sumari Seed V1. If you're not familiar with what seeding is, it's basically loading into an empty or low population game in order to get the server up to 100 people. Depending on the server, seeds can take quite a while, and Sumari is the most popular seeding layer since it's so small and there's a middle cap to fight over when you just have about 10 or so people on a side. This seeding layer will make everything much easier for admins and seeders since there's no staging phase, the back caps start pre cap for each side, there's a forward spawn with a lodgy to set up a seeding fob, and both teams can immediately start fighting over walled states. This might seem like a minor change, but this is a huge change for those who are active in server communities and admins alike. 
For other map changes, we've also got quite a few updates to invasion layers. Although this is a huge wall of text, essentially almost every large map in the game has had a fairly close forward spawn for defenders in order to allow them to set up and defend the first cap after staging. It appears the devs have been paying attention to games and don't really like how often first cap stomps win. And on seven layers, the defending team has had their forward spawn completely removed, while 15 other layers have had their forward spawns moved further from the first cap. There's also been quite a few changes to vehicles with things like the Kath Al Basra Invasion V3 layer having their first lav 6s delayed from the start in order to further help attackers. For those of y'all who do play a lot of Invasion, let me know in the comments down below what you think of this change since I'm not really sure if this was necessarily needed. But I don't typically play 24-7 Invasion servers. If I'm being honest, I kind of like that sometimes games aren't fair and if you can overcome a crazy defense on the first objective, it gives attackers a lot more to play for and a lot more pride in what they just did. I might be crazy in this, but games shouldn't be fair all the time, and Invasion is just that. Moving on to the other gameplay changes, all light and medium APCs have had their ticket cost cut in half and will now only cost 5 tickets instead of the 10 when destroyed, in line with lodgies, transports, and helicopters. All the vehicles that are now 5 tickets are listed on the screen here. This will hopefully encourage more people to use these vehicles as transport options since they're not nearly as costly if lost. But the one vehicle that got a huge buff with this change is the Bulldog. This Vic is already incredibly overpowered if used correctly, and at 5 tickets it's a no brainer to bring out. Helicopters that end up in unrecoverable states will now also have a much quicker burnout rate. Previously, helis that crashed and had no way to repair the rotors due to nearby collision issues would burn out and destroy themselves after 5 minutes. However, this has now been reduced to 1.5 minutes. T-62 tanks have also been tweaked to reduce the size of their ammo racks hitbox since the previous model was much larger than intended, causing the tank to frequently cook off way easier than it should. Another Amorak change also fixed an issue where the T-72 needed two ATGMs into the side in order to cook off. This has been changed and now all tanks can be one-shot Amorak with ATGMs. Additionally, we have some significant changes to what happens to players when you get incapacitated by various ammo types. Now, every round that kills you from small arms will no longer reduce your in-cap timer, including headshots, but higher caliber rounds still will. The following damage has also been changed. The 338 Lapua rounds from the C14 Timberwolf and all 50 cal headshots will now only allow 30 seconds for revives. 30mm AP body shots will be 2 minutes, but headshots will be insta-death, and for the first time, infantry will also be insta-killed if they are within close proximity to an IED or hit by artillery. Too often commanders will already an area only for medics to then rush out and pick everyone up, so artillery on troops in the open will be a huge ticket loss moving forward, and this is an incredible buff to command strikes. Finally, a nice quality of life update has been included in the game where you can actually save keybinds from a new control menu at the bottom of your settings screen. Save your keybinds, swap profiles, and anything changed to the control menu will automatically be saved on whatever profile you currently have up. This is a really nice change for players who have a lot of custom keybinds set up for things like flying helicopters, so hopefully this makes managing that easier moving forward. There have also been a whole host of bug fixes, such as getting killed by fragmentation damage while inside of a tap V, some SDK changes that have added the Canadians, allowing them to be included in all future mods, as well as a nice shout out to the community playtesters who helped fix the game by including including their names on the footlockers in the infantry tutorial. Just like the names on the IED phone calls, this is a really nice touch and is great to see from the devs. I'll include a link to the full patch notes below, but what do you guys think of V2.11? There's nothing that's really game changing that I've noticed, but if I'm being honest, a lot of these smaller changes like ticket values, variable exclusion radii, and insta death timers show me that the devs are looking at more specific gameplay items to adjust in order to improve the overall game. And that's something I can 100% get on board with. Oh, and a new map is always really nice to see. Let me know in the comments below, and if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. But that's it for me. Until next time, peace. Yeah, we just took over their tow fob next to Kalat. That was a great push, guys. Good job. Yeah, I'll contact you. We're good.